Well, in urban environments, many families have downsized to smaller spaces, especially apartments, to save money. But what do you have to do uh, when you have a pet? Well, the pet lady, Dana Humphrey, is here to tell us how we can have a smooth transition with your furry friend like Jerry here, who is adoptable to your old lab. Absolutely. So. Thanks for having me and Jerry. We're best friends now that I gave him a treat. <laughs> well, Jerry's, uh, again, as you said, two years old. He's a Labrador. I don't have any more treats. I'm sorry. And he's from Friends of Homeless Animals. It's okay. SOHA.org. And when you're looking to adopt a dog, you would definitely want to think about being realistic. Mm -hmm. You want to think about your living situation. If you're living in an apartment, you know, what type of breed would be the best fit for you and your family? Jerry is great if you take him out for a nice long morning walk, potentially a run, yeah, and, then a he'll, and then he'll chill the rest of the day. Yeah. He's very relaxed, very yeah, friendly. Exactly. We just met too. Hi. <laughs> uh, and, and what's Jerry's backstory? Well, we actually don't know, but he does have a brother named Ben, Ben okay. and Jerry, and Ben's uh, brother was actually adopted out today, so okay. Ben found a home. Now we're just hoping that Jerry can find so a home as well. maybe a good dog to go with another dog. Absolutely. A pair. Yeah, he's, he's dog friendly, he's great with families, um, and there's his little picture. All right, so. so let's talk about apartment hunting and apartment living, because in Washington, so many people yeah. working low-paying jobs, it's a high cost of living, right? and it's challenging. A lot of people love their pets, and they want to find the right place. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, there are a lot of low-cost options. Um, you know, one, one great option for treats is something that, like the Minties. Um, this is a great option to keep their their breath and their teeth smelling fresh, and it's only five bucks a bag. So this is a great low-cost option if you want to do some some money-saving tips. Um, but something that's really important is you know to really be prepared by the time that you get home with your new adoptable dog. Hopefully you'll adopt, not shop. Um, so you want to make sure that you always have a hydration situation, right? You always have some kind of water bowl to keep your dog ready to go. This one's awesome because you can just bring it with you. Very nice. Um, but there's tons, you know, the ones that, that you can leave at home with the, the flowing water fountain of water. Um, you want to be prepared as well if you're going for a walk. Here's some little doggy poop bags. Um, Let me see these. Be, you know, be a good neighbor. Right. Make friends with your neighbors. Don't be, don't have your dog be a problem. Make right. sure you call your landlord for it first. You know, make sure that you live in a pet friendly apartment. Who are these people who let their dogs go anywhere and don't pick it up? You got to pick up the poop. There's no poop karma. fairy. <laughs> there is no poop fairy. And my shoes can prove it. I've, I've had that experience. So, what about, you know, the, the challenges of, of working with a small space? Let's say I have a limited budget. What's your advice to a pet owner who has a dog, maybe Jerry size, who sure. really needs that space? Well, you know, the space can be fine as long as you're active. You know, you got to be active. you got to get out there. Maybe you work long hours. Um, so then if you're out at night, you know, get a pup light. Make sure that you and your dog can be seen so that you're safe. If you go out at night, go for a long walk or try to squeeze it in the morning. Wake up in the early hours and really get that exercise in. It's going to be a lot better for your dog and for you. You can also leave interactive toys at home with the dog so that they have something to do and they're stimulated while you're not there. You also want to make sure that they are flea Free. Well, I was going to say, we're entering cold and flu yes. season. As humans, we think about our, our hygiene, washing hands, getting flu shots. But dogs, there's a lot. In an urban environment, there's so many more dogs, so much sure. more interaction. Especially yeah, there's dogs. kennel cough going around right yeah. now. You know, um, you want to make sure they have all their vaccinations, keep them up to date. And actually, you know, preventative vet care is much more cost effective than reactive vet care, right? You can keep your dog healthy and, and flea free and um, get all the vaccinations they need. You won't have the expensive vet bills down the line with more difficult problems. The VetGuard Plus is a great option for fleas and ticks. It's important all year round. You know, everyone likes to talk about fleas and ticks in the spring, but in the fall, you know, that dog's going back to the shelter if he has a whole bunch of bugs all over him, right? Nobody wants bugs in their house. Right. No, anybody who lives in Washington knows how often fire trucks, ambulances are going around the city. A lot of noise, yeah. which can be kind of upsetting to, to animals, Absolutely. especially younger animals. Well, luckily, Jerry is actually very low key, but some dogs have a high anxiety. The noise can really stress them so out. How do you desensitize? There's a few different things you can do. You can use lavender. That's like a natural kind of soothing, calming thing. You can get fresh lavender. You can get a lavender candle, anything that has lavender oils in it. Um, something else you can try is also the calming coat. Um, this is like you just put it around um, like a jacket. Um, it swaddles them like a baby. So they feel a much more calm and secure, and they won't be as distracted by those noisy sirens or doorbells or whatever the case may be. You mentioned that Jerry had a buddy named Tom who was just adopted. Now they're separated. Yeah. And, and if you have a dog that's 
and more social. If you lose a pet and another pet is left behind, any resources or references for, for getting them to socialize? Where do you send Absolutely. Those, those pet owners? You definitely want to get your pet a buddy and have them well socialized. You can check out petsdating.com. That's a great option to find a dog that lives near you that might be the right size and um, an attitude for your dog. Did this guy go running before this segment? <laughs> he did. <laughs> okay. Dana Humphrey, thanks so much for coming in. Some great advice, great tips. And Jerry's looking for a home. So if you have some space in your home, have another pet who wants a, a buddy, a Tom perhaps. Yeah, exactly. You get these two connected. Thanks so much, Dana. <laughs> Thank have you. Have a wonderful weekend coming up here on Let's Talk Live.